do not tell me any of your life secrets or anything that <laughs> you don't want spread all over the greater United States because I'll do it. Just so you know. Okay. Okay. Good I don't know. know Colin warned you about me at all, but no, he no. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew I got to know Colin about three years ago. Um, so uh, Todd Oberg, that old and fat heads who I used to work for. I swear they had like this bromance going and I used to tease him endlessly about it. But uh, Colin was in my corner for some things. Like I used to do these over the top shows and um, the owner was like, why are you doing this? It's so stupid. And Colin was always, he always showed me pictures of places he'd been and dealers that had done those kinds of things. And he was always in my corner for that kind of stuff. Like he got yeah. the whole marketing thing, so. Yeah. I like Colin. He's he's a kick in the pants for sure. <laughs> he really is. He's something else. Yeah. So what do you so tell me what you do at Cherokee with Colin? Yeah. So I came on as their sales trainee. They go through one like every yep. year or two or three and yep. basically just follow him around and the other reps and, yep. and learn as much product and stuff from them as I can. Okay. Awesome. So have you been in on the planning? stages for this EV unit? Yeah, since pretty much the start of it. Um, okay. We kind of knew that it was coming and what we were releasing and we talked about the floor plan and Colin came from Arizona and we walked yep. it up the line, the fir very first one. Okay. Um, and kind of like, hey, what do we want? What do we want to change? Okay. It's really, so when you start Googling anything to do with EV and trailers, do you know what comes up? No. Um, so there's the, the Tesla group, um, broke yeah. off and came up with something called Lightship, Lightship okay. One. Um, if you have a chance to look at their website, it's phenomenal. Like hands down, one of the best websites I've ever seen. It's very techy, very cool, really mm -hmm. awesome. Just in some of the technology and how that website works. But then I look at the comments on this Lightship and it looks like one it looks like like aliens landed somewhere <laughs> and it's cool to a point but um the whole the whole roof is all solar and there's no bathroom in it and there's no separate bedroom it's very it looks like a spaceship and that is the only thing that comes up when you look at ev trailers other than motorized so motorized they're starting to dip their toe in the water when it comes to that um, i've talked to dealers that have been required to have evs on their um, lots and there's towing issues and and stuff like that right yours is the first one that i've seen that is an ev trailer so the fact that we can throw this on people's radar i think is going to be awesome because there isn't a travel trailer that i could find out there anywhere so yeah and affordable free. yeah and affordable i was very surprised at the price um so i'm hoping to like throw a bunch of stuff out there to promote what you guys are doing and um just put it on some people's radars because nobody knows about it so yeah um so i was looking at your notes and i want you to walk me through how you guys came to decide to do this and just some of the things after being in the RV industry as long as I have one of the things that you said in here was that there's an increasing need for EV trailers as states begin to ban gas usage now my question in that is Cherokee doesn't do motorized so when you talk banning gas usage are you talking propane or yeah, I am. So we're starting to see like states like New York and California are starting to ban more and more things like that. Okay. And, you know, hopefully that those bans don't move across the whole entire United States. But those are still two huge markets for states. So we want to make sure we hit those or people visiting those states. Because um, once again, not only are they huge states, they got a lot of beautiful campgrounds. Right. I, is there a reason that they're looking at banning propane gas in those states? Do you know? Yeah, I, I'm not sure the exact reason. I would guess it's some sort of um, emissions or environmentally friendly type mission. Okay. We are all becoming very environmentally um, aware, that is for sure. I know 
the one thing when things started coming out, propane and electric, like it confused people. People would always ask, um, can I run my refrigerator? Can I leave my propane on when I'm driving? All of those questions, do you think that this will help cut down on some of the confusion for the first time user or those ones, people that just aren't sure about things? Yeah, I do. I think that was kind of one of the things that we had in mind with it being an EV. Um, so like I kind of mentioned to you, we cut the price way down. And with that, you know, you don't necessarily get the solar panels with it at the start, but that makes the ease of use so much, you know, everybody's going to be able to use this thing because all you have to do is go to a campsite and plug it in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about refilling your propane or, or um, getting a new bottle of propane every time you run out. Um, you don't have to worry about if your solar's good or bad or if you got enough charge for this or that. You literally just have to find your camp spot and plug in. That's all you're going to have to do. That's really cool. And I, I wasn't sure about it at first, but the more I thought about it, and some of the things that we hit up against when explaining things to new new campers, um, it started to make a lot more sense. Um, surge protection. Is that going to be more of a need in these, do you think? Um, I, I don't think you're going to see that as much. Um, you know, it's going to be 30 amp. You're not going to have a ton of spots to plug in stuff. I mean, in a unit that size, at least, you know, mm -hmm. the, the little 16, 16 foot frame type of units. So I don't think that's going to be a huge concern. Okay. I was, one of the things I noticed when I looked at your pictures, and that's why I asked the question as far as it looked roomier, it looked bigger than like a 16 BHS, which it is um, replicating that floor plan, but it looked a lot bigger. And so I wondered if, if you had taken the space on that frame where the propane tanks normally sit and you had maybe bumped that forward a little bit because it does, it looks very roomy inside. No, and it, it is very roomy. Um, I think there's a lot of space to it. I think the, the big storage bins on the one side um, add an element of storage and kind of give you the, oh, wow, this has a lot of space for a little guy, but then you also have the bunks and the big bed. Um, mm -hmm. Something that we've done across all the Wolf Pup and Cherokee line is move all the little trailers from seven feet wide to seven and a half feet wide. Oh, I so didn't that know might that. be, yeah, that might be one okay. of the things that you're kind of noticing too. Awesome. Yeah, it definitely looked, and it's just cute and a little fireplace. It just looked cozy inside. I really liked your yeah. pictures. Um, what is your plan with the wolf dens? Is this, I mean, I know this is just coming out, but what other floor plans are you looking at doing and how soon maybe are those going to be hitting the market? Yeah, so we don't have a ton on the Wolf Dens yet. Um, it's definitely going to be a line that we're looking to push out more and more. But the the 16 EV is going to be one of its own kind, basically. Um, you know, it's going to be the electric focus. It's going to be the smaller unit. It's going to be that price point unit. And while we ha might have others in that line, they're going to be more similar to other Cherokee models than the, the EV. Okay. All right, so the last thing before you go, as a salesperson, if I was looking at this first time, never bought a trailer, don't know what I'm looking at, walk me through all of the best points of this trailer. Yeah, let me actually get the floor plan up here while I do this. Um, so I think from higher level, I kind of sent you to this, but walking through it, there'd be four big advantages um, and you would kind of have to figure out what the customer is for this, but there's going to be a customer that maybe falls into a variety of these. So the first one is it's environmentally friendly, right? The EV factor to it. It's going to produce near zero emissions, um, help reduce air pollution, combat uh, climate change when you're, when you're focusing on that. The easy use, which we already touched about. So eliminating the propane, you don't have to, all you have to do is plug into a campsite. You don't have to, to fill it up. You don't have to spend money on the gas. Right. You just go plug and play um, and enjoy your camping trip. It's gonna be lighter weight um, because you're you're losing that propane and those other kind of heavier features of maybe a, a bigger fridge or a big and bigger stove. Um, it's gonna be a little more lighter, lighter weight, give more people access to it. So now maybe if you have an SUV that can only haul, you know, 4,000 pounds, it's going to be closer to making it work than, you know, you have to get a truck for every unit that you haul. Right. Uh, the other thing would be safety. 
So if you have a big safety conscious, especially those people who are getting into it for the first time, have never hauled something before, now you don't have to worry about the fire risk on the back. Um, you don't have to worry about breathing in any of the, the stuff that we're trying to get rid of as far as the toxic fumes and the emissions. Awesome. Um, on the inside of the unit, that's where it's really exciting because you saw the pictures. I'm sure you're going to post these pictures. Yep. It's so beautiful. Um, you throw a few decorations in there and it really feels like almost like a little tiny home and yep. it's pretty spacious for the length and the weight. Um, you're going to walk in on the right. You're going to have your queen bed running east west with a nice little shelf over it. Um, put tons of decorations, put your clothes on there. Tons of storage underneath the bed if you wanted to as well that goes into the outside storage so you can just access it inside outside yep. either way move to a nice little cozy two-person dinette with the window right there um, across from the dinette and the window you're going to see the sink and a massive window to kind of look over your campsite as you were doing dishes or preparing your food mm -hmm. um, below that you're going to notice a beautiful fireplace so like I live in Indiana, if you're in Wisconsin, yep. you're going to have those early spring, um, early fall, late fall days where it's a little bit chilly. Yeah. You can turn that on, take the chill out of the air. It also looks really good. So you're going to be does. able to camp a little bit later in a unit like this, Yep. but also have that. Um, you're going to have your fridge with your pantry to the right of it. We're going to include some of those, um, those cubes that you're going to see in the pictures going to give you a little more storage but you don't have to worry about the drawers um or the the shelving units you're just going to be able to pull those in and out and kind of store all your food or all your camping trip the great part about those as well is if you wanted to bring stuff out to the campsite you don't have to pick it all up in your hands and carry it with you you just oh, yeah. grab grab your tote with you take it out to the to the fireplace and cook up your cook up your s'mores cook, cook up your dogs bring your burgers out there whatever you want okay yeah, never thought um, about that yeah on the back end, you're going to have your bunk beds and then your rear bath um, with your tub, shower, toilet. It's going to have all of those things. Awesome. So. All right. Well, I'm ready to buy. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. Good sales pitch. Yeah. Um, thank, you, thank you. Is there, I don't know, before we go, because I, like I said, I didn't want to keep you. Um, yeah. Is there anything else? I mean, you've really hit it. And between this and the stuff that you sent me in an email, I'll be able to write some stuff up. Is there any... Anything else that you want to throw out there before we before we get done? Um, I think you're going to see some more economical type units popping up on the market. Okay. I think what's going to set us apart is we're still going to carry the same standard of quality in this Cherokee as other Cherokees. Yeah. We're not building a new facility to build these. It's going to be the same one that our wolf pups are in. So okay. It's going to be the same standard of quality. Um, we're going to still try to include as many features, although we're still trying to build that that price point environmentally friendly unit. Yeah. You're still going to see some of the features in there, like the fireplace, and we're going to have a roof mounted AC, which is going to be a bigger AC. It's going to be a little bit nicer for all those people. Um, outside of that, it's just going to be a unit for anybody, really. But we really hope that it gets a lot of people camping for the first time and actually experiencing it. Um, Maybe interact with your dealership a little bit and start them, you know, as they want to move up the pipeline, as they get kids or want to move into something bigger, or maybe they want to move into something smaller okay. and they want to go something like this. We and just we really hope that, that. It... we do see the reverse happen. Um, I think it's really cool that you guys are the front runners on this and you know darn well they're going to, there's going to be people out there copy. And that's like us in the RV industry, we know when somebody comes out with a good idea, everybody copies it. Yep. So um, having you guys as a front runner and letting people know that I think is going to be huge. Yeah, uh, we're very excited about it. So Yeah, it's very cool. I can't wait to push this out there and just put it on more people's radar. Because like I said, there's nothing out there for EV trailers unless it's motorized. And uh, you guys are the first. I think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's very exciting. Awesome. Well, that's all the time I'm going to take from you today. I really appreciate it. Tell Colin thanks. And yeah. um, hopefully we'll be in touch with something else soon. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Logan. Have a good weekend. Yep, you too. Bye. Bye.